Mental health is one of those topics nowadays that is being spoken about all the time. What is mental health? And what is really happening with the mental health crisis? Nowadays, mental health is something that is being spoken about all the time. And it is open for conversation. There's so much less stigma on going to a therapist, having people talk about it, being able to say, yes, I have this disability, or yes, I'm going through this, or I'm going through that. In my personal life, I have people around me that have different mental illnesses. I myself have been diagnosed with ADHD. Personally, I'm someone who all my life never took medication for it but I understood how to control it myself. Some people don't have that sense of privilege or haven't gone through that as well to learn how to mitigate that energy. But being a hyperactive person growing up in school, it was a lot harder for me than most people. I was always trying to do the next thing. I was getting bored often in class. There were so many different things, and this is without the phones and without the technology. So imagine now, someone who grows up with this hyperactivity as a child, and their hyperactivity is basically being mitigated by this phone. This phone is able to give them all this dopamine, all this energy, all these different colors. They're able to get distracted now with this phone. Instead of being distracted with their thoughts, distracted with the motion of their body, being able to do the next thing, talk to this person, talk to that person. The mental health crisis, yes, is happening even more and more, and more people are being impacted by it, but why? because of the cellular devices? Is it because of just technology? Is it because of the modern social media platforms that has us comparing ourselves to everyone around us? Having FOMO, feeling all these instant dopamine, these gratification wheel, the doom scrolling, all these different things are allowing for our mental health to start faltering more and more and more as time goes on. The technology has warped our perception. It has warped our perception of what's real and what's fake. People live in this fake social media world and forget to live in real life. So obviously they're gonna have a lot more mental health defects. Obviously they're gonna feel less confident about themselves. They're constantly staring at themselves behind a phone. They're constantly thinking that they're not good enough, that they're not pretty enough, that they need a filter to be looking attractive. But again, this is the problem with the modern social media age is that we tend to forget is this what's really causing the mental health crisis? Are the extra drugs, the alcohol consumption, what's causing the mental health crisis? There's no stigma now behind indulging in binge drinking. There's no stigma behind the indulgence in all the marijuana, all the different cigarettes, the drugs, the jewels, all these different drugs that we put into our body cannot be good for us. And the worst drug of them all is the drug of attention, the drug of social media. And again, people forget to think like, wait, do I need to detox alcohol? Do I need to detox smoking? You should also be detoxing social media. And I'm not saying that social media is 100% inherently negative. Granted, I enjoy using it sometimes. I like staying up to date with things. I like seeing news, media, but understand that you have to detox from the things that are causing negative impacts in your brain. Even when it comes to having relationships and conversations, you are not supposed to have the location of every single person around us at all times. We were never supposed to have the instant access of anyone. We can call someone if they don't pick up, boom, they're ignoring you. But again, we used to be able to send just a letter to someone, sit back and wait for weeks, months until they respond back to us. For example, when I was younger, I remember not seeing friends for three months over the summer break until we saw them again. And it was almost like a shock to see them again. Like, oh my God, like you have a new hairstyle. Oh my God, this is so cool. It was like this like feeling of euphoria. But now because of social media and because of the internet, you almost feel like you're so up to date with everyone around you, but you're not actually up to date with them. You might be seeing what's going on on the outside, but you don't really know what's going on with them. You can say like, oh, they've been up to this, they've been up to that, but you don't know anything about them anymore. And I remember watching a video and someone was explaining and they were saying things like, oh, like you knew me in elementary school, you knew me in high school or middle school. You don't even know me now past college. I'm a way different person. You've evolved and you think you still know them. But if you can't just pick up the phone and call them and have a conversation with them, then do you really know this person? You really don't. But again, it isolates us. This is showing us that with isolation brings more mental health problems. So again, it's all connected to understanding, wait, why is there a mental health crisis? Because of the fact that we're not talking to one another anymore. We're not interacting with each other in real life anymore. We're so busy comparing ourselves behind the phone. We're sitting there waiting for dopamine behind a cellular device, but it's not giving us the type of dopamine that our brains and our bodies are genuinely craving. The mental health crisis and the epidemic of this only got worse after COVID, where people became more alienated. They wanted to work alone more often, working from home. And again, me personally, I enjoy working from home. I enjoy being able to wake up and not have to drive 30 minutes, 40 minutes to a job that you don't even want to be at. But there is a crisis here where people aren't communicating enough. People aren't actually talking to one another. So they're not actually sharing their thoughts. They're not sharing their expressions. They're not actually having emotional boundaries. So now, 
all the pressures in this hyper-individualistic society and where you're living in your head. And that is where a lot of mental health issues are gonna start happening. And even so nowadays, we can Google any illness, any symptom and say, yep, this is what I have. And even then we look for a magic pill to fix a problem, a magic drug to fix whatever problem we're having. But at the end of the day, the best drug there is, is when you actually are able to control your emotions. You're able to get the right sunshine. You're able to actually go out of your way to better your life. It's not just a magic pill that will fix your life, but your mind. And people forget that the mind is the most powerful thing. That is why we're having so much mental health issues is because we're starting to lose control of our own minds. And that is the danger. That's a true danger. Even when it comes down to depression, people always say like, oh, depression, is it real? Is it not? What's wrong with depression? Well, depression is definitely real because I feel depressed. But at the end of the day, you have to understand, you can feel depressed, but you don't have to become depression. So you can have sadness, you can feel depression. I in my life have felt so down bad in my life where one can say, I'm depressed. Every day I don't wanna wake up in the morning. Every day I'm so down bad. I don't even have a, a drive to wake up in the morning. But understand that that can pass only if you allow yourself to understand the emotion you're feeling, why you feel that way. And then start changing things in your life in order to not feel this way. Obviously, it's a real thing where the chemical imbalances in your brain could cause things to happen. But you yourself can change different chemical imbalances in your brain. With exercise, you can add more serotonin and dopamine, changing your habits, your diet, the amount of sun you get. So many things matter. Even your gut health matters. But again, we're starting to fall and go further away from worrying about those things and just looking for a pill. And again, the stigma behind it is lowering, which is good to talk about it. But again, make sure you're acting about it as well, not just constantly talking to about it to a therapist. And from someone who's tried therapy before, I realized that when I was there, it made me think, wait a minute, I'm sitting here talking about my problems every single time, but the solutions that you're talking to me about, I already understand that this could be a solution. So do I really need this for my own personal life? Or do I just need to boss up, get things done, and make sure I change the outcome of my life for myself? And again, this is coming from someone who with hyperactivity, brain doesn't stop running. I find it hard to sleep, anxiety when I wake up in the morning. It happens, we all kind of go through these things, but you have to understand how to control your brain and your outcome and do the thing that you need to do to become better. And again, the stigma about it is starting to lower down. So you can talk about it, you can understand it, but understand that you yourself are in the driver's seat. You yourself have to control it and understand you have to eliminate and mitigate all those things we talked about earlier in the video of getting away from those things that are ruining your mental health, the comparison on social media, the constant use of these dopamine delivery devices. You have to touch grass, you have to be outside, you have to exercise, do things that make you more human. And when you've exercised all of these options, then we can go into the next step. But make sure you exercise these options of holistic healing and healing your mind and becoming the master of your mind. Because again, our mind can either be our best friend or our enemy. You get to choose and you get to decide. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please leave comments down below what you think as well. Again, this is just one person's opinion. I personally, as someone who's seen mental health all around me all my life, I understand what has worked and what hasn't worked in different people in my life. And I understand that at times it seems impossible, but you have to find a way to make it work. You have to find a way to get out of the rut. You have to, you owe it to yourself. You don't wanna live in life in all depression and sadness. Find the little things that make you happy. Try new things. Get out of bed in the morning if you can. Do anything you can to get to the next step. Obviously, I'm not saying, hey, you drink water and get sunshine and you'll be straight. No, obviously there's gonna be things going on. But again, control what you can control about the situation. Exercise all those options before you rush to take a bunch of pills that you'll be on for the rest of your life. Really try to increase that mental strength because that in and of itself is what could be the best healer in your life. Thank you again and be sure to leave comments and like and subscribe and again, Looking forward to talking more about this. And if you guys want me to talk or dive into a different topic, please let me know in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. See you next time.